Science Beetle. Hey, welcome back students. This is Dr. D for Science Beetle and Math 101. Today we're going to learn how to convert fractions to decimals and then from decimals to percents. But let's begin with a, a brief review of fractions. Remember from the last lesson, we talked about fractions being some number over another number. We also learned that the top number was called the numerator, and we learned that the bottom number was called the denominator. Okay. Another shortcut that I showed you was that the uh, numerator could also be considered the part that we're interested in. Okay, and we also could call the denominator the total of number of parts. And so I'll just write that as total parts. Okay, and so that's one way that we can look at fractions. And we looked at some examples, and um, so we were able to look at uh, kind of circles, and we kind of did this, and then I asked you about how much is, how much does the area that's shaded in green represent out of the total? Well, we notice here that if we counted up the total number of pieces, we had one, two, three, four, and we knew that because we had a total number of four, only two of those boxes were filled, so we knew that the fraction here would be two-fourths. Um, or another way of doing this, if we were to reduce this by two, uh, we know that two would go into two one time, so this would be reduced to one, and two would go into four two times, so this would be a one-half, okay? But what do we do now? How, uh, let's learn how to convert this one half into a decimal. Well, if you look at the, the way that it's written here, this, the way that uh, I taught you last time indicated that the top number was the part and the bottom number was the, the total. There is another way that you can actually read this. We can actually read this as follows. So this is going to be like 1. The line here in the middle is going to represent the word divided by. And then the bottom number here is going to be the, just the number that you're saying, by number 2. And so we already know how this looks like. So when we say 1 divided by 2, essentially what we're trying to say is we're saying 1 being divided by 2. And if we do this, can we represent the fraction that we're aware of, 1 divided by 2, as a decimal? And sure enough, we can. So when we go in and do this, what we want to do is just do some regular division. How many times does 2 go into 1? Well, it goes in 0 times. So we figuratively put a, zero, a, a decimal point there to denote that, that we're going to be now adding. Uh, the number is actually going to be less than 1. And so we have to add a 0 to the end of uh, the number underneath the, the, the dividing sign and then ask ourselves again, how many times can 2 go into 10 in this case? And we know that 5 times 2 will give us 10. Since there is no remainder, we can stop here. And now we've, what we've done essentially has, has equated the one-half with a decimal. So now we know that one-half is equivalent to 0 0.5. And so this is the decimal that one-half one is equal to. Let's practice another one here. Let's pretend that we have three-fourths, and we want to represent this as a decimal. Since we don't have to go through and all the figurative, all the figures, values, stuff like that, we can just go ahead and rewrite this in a different form. We can say that 3 is going to be divided by 4. Okay, and do we just do the, the, the division here? And remember that there is a decimal at the end of the 4, and there's a decimal that we're going to carry up to the top here. And so how many times can 4 go into 3? Zero times. So we add a zero. And then we ask ourselves now, how many times can 4 go into 30? Well, we know that 4 times 7 is 28. 4 times 8 is 32. 8 is too much, but 7 fits the bill. So we'll put 7 there. 4 times 7 is 28. And then we go through and subtract. 30 minus 28 gives us 2. And we can keep going here and add a 0 and bring it down. So that'll give us 20. 4 goes into 20 five times. So our decimal then is... 0.75. So we can write now that 3 fourths is equal to 0 0.75. And so this is your decimal, equivalent to 3 fourths. Now, what if we want to take this and take it a step further? 
What if we want to know how to convert the 0.75 into a percent? Well, before we can do that, let me give you a definition of what a percent is. A percent is very similar to the fraction that we learned before. However, the percent then is going to be the number that you're asking about or some number that you're interested in out of 100. And so this is going to be equal to the percent. Now, how do we use this equation to figure out what we, what the percent of 0.75 is going to be? Well, since we know that uh, we have the 0.75, we want to equate that or equal that to the equation. So we take the 0 0.75, which we already know, and we equal that to whatever the percent number is going to be. So we know that it's going to be some number divided by 100. Well, if we're trying to find the value of this number, we can say that this value is equal to x. And if you start to see this, this is now the beginning of very, very basic algebra. And so since we've got, if we go ahead and rewrite this equation, essentially we've got 0.75 is equal to x divided by 100. Okay? And if we do that, what we need to do here is we need to multiply it by 100. And when we do that, that the hundreds on the right-hand side of the equation go away. And whatever we do to the one side, we have to do to the other. So we multiply the other side by 100. And when we do that, essentially what we're going to get is 75. And so that would be your percent here. Okay? And so when we look at 0.75, what we're saying is that 0.75 is equal to 75%. Let's try one more problem here before we move on. What if I had 3 eighths and I wanted to know what the percent is? Well, first, let's convert this to a decimal. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this question as 3 divided by 8. And I'm going to go ahead and do the division here, bring the decimal up, okay? And so A goes into 3 how many times? 0 times. And if I add the 0 there, 8 goes into 30 3 times. That'll give me 24. Subtracted remainder of 6. I add another 0 and bring it down. So when I take 8 into 60 then, I know that 8 times 7 is 56, so 7 would give me a reasonable number that I need. I subtract that from 60, that gives me remainder 4. I add another 0, bring it down, so that gives me 40. 40 times some number will give, 8 times some number will give me 40. I know that number is 5. So when I do 8 times 5, that gives me 40, and I get 0. Now I know I can stop. So at this point, what I do know is that 3 eighths is equal to 0 0.375. But what I want to know is I want to find out what the percent is. And so in order for me to do that, what I need to do at this point is to use that equation that I had before. So 0 0.375 is going to be equal to some number divided by 100. And so all I got to do at this point is multiply by 100 on the left hand, on the right hand side. My hand, hundreds cancel out. And whatever I do to the right-hand side, I have to do to the left-hand side. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this as 0 0.375 times 100 is equal to that number or that percent. Okay? And so when I multiply 0.375 by 100, the number here, and just so that you can see it done, let me go ahead and write it over here on the left-hand side. 0 0.375 times 100. Since I have two zeros here, I don't need to rewrite them. I'll just write them down here. 1, 2. And then I have the 1. So I multiply 1 times 5. That's going to give me 5. The 1 times the 7. That's going to give me 7. And then the 1 times the 3. That's going to give me 3. The one thing that I do need to pay attention to is how many spaces in the decimal point over here is. And I know that that is 1, 2, 3 spaces. So my answer has to have my decimal point 1, 2, 3 in. And so the answer here would be 37. Let me write that again. Sorry. 37.5. And so that answer there is what we're looking at over here. 
And so what I'm looking at here, when I look at 0 0.375, this is equal to 37.5%. And actually, one thing that I also want to make sure that uh, we cover here before, the, before we go is there is a shortcut to all of this. And so let me show you what that is briefly. Well, notice how we went from 3 eighths here. We have got all the way to 0 0.375. So there is that first step of trying to take a fraction to a decimal. But once you get to the decimal, it's very easy to convert a decimal over to a percent. And we saw this over here on the right, on the left-hand side, when we multiplied by 100. If you notice the decimal, I'm going to go ahead and write this number up here as 0 0.375. And then our answer at the bottom, 37.500. Do you notice anything different about these two numbers? Well, if you look carefully here, notice the decimal point. In the original problem, 0 0.375, the decimal point was before the 3. But when we wanted to find out the percent, we had to multiply it by 100, and then the decimal point moved between the 7 and the 5, essentially moving from in front of the 3, it moved back or to the right, one space, two spaces. So a very easy trick to, so that you don't have to multiply by 100 like we did here is move the decimal point from where it's at, move it to the right, two spaces. Whenever you do that, essentially you are multiplying it by 100, but this is a shortcut way. So let me practice this with you here for a second. So if I gave you the following, 11.37, can you give me the percent here? Well, the percent here would be to simply move the decimal point two spaces to the right, one, two. So the percent here would be one, one, three, seven percent. What if we had another problem, point zero, five, eight, one? What would be the percent then? Well, if you're just moving the decimal point over two spaces, one, two, the percent then would be five point eight one percent. Let's try one more before we go. Let's say that we had 0.86. Can you think of the percentage then? Well, you probably guessed it already. If you move the decimal point over two spaces, the, the percent here would be 86%. So as you can see, it's very easy once you know this shortcut, how to convert a decimal over to a percent. In next lessons, we'll, we'll explore a little bit more as to why this is important. But for now, I hope that was helpful for you. Subscribe us and catch us at the next lesson.